Oh, so they couldn't hear me. That's why you want me to repeat it. I knew you. I knew you messed something up. I knew it had, it had to be something that was messed up. That's why I, I, I said that. Mishy dies a lot. Says there's no sound at all. Can't just can't believe this man went live and 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 did all this. No sound whatsoever. He, he, your your volume oh. levels are coming through. So Mitchie can't hear you. Uh, 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 yeah, okay, okay. They they can hear it now. They can hear it now. It's, oh, it's, I was about it's, to it's, say now they can hear. You no, know, whatever. it was it was it was it was, it was um, awful before guess that. What? If you're with, with your no topics you, list having behind. Well, that's what I said. I'm trying to fix because <laughs> for some reason when I did I I I did something stupid and I updated OBS yesterday and it's not reading the topic list. So I'm literally redoing it so it, I can redo it again through another template and refresh it. Oh, um, well, I mean, I shouldn't have it's, updated it's, it's like this is this is the 173rd episode. This uh, is just like it's like it's the third episode, you know. I'm just tired, like what, what are we doing? What are we I'm doing? Not, I'm not know. I'm not doing this with you today. Um, okay. I'm not, not doing, doing this with you today. today. Uh once again, if you're happy you ain't know it, clap your hands. If you're happy you know that, clap your hands. And this is episode 173 of the Damage Per Second Podcast with the homie Slow Mo Backslap. Um, sorry for no audio two seconds ago, but we're just gonna, you know, bypass that and act like it never happened, even though Slow Mo will consistently let that know that that's happened over the course of the show. But with mm-hmm. that being said, homie, we'll do. homie, 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 Yo, homie, what up? what what's you up? been up to, man? What's going on with you? Oh, Mr. Slow Mo uh, Backslap. Yeah. You know, I've been playing Dragon's Dogma 2, pissing trash. people off on Twitter. Wow. Call it trash, I, huh? I mean, the, I the optimization you, your, is trash. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I saw your Gamers Nexus breakdown. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you just like messing and poking the bear. <laughs> no, I, I was trying to inform people. I just wanted people to know that what was going on. What was going on is, you know, it's, it's, uh, um, you know, it's, it's, it's boo boo. The optimization is not good, and and you typically, and look. You remember when I was saying, um, I don't know if I said this last week. I, don't, I probably didn't, but I was talking to you about this uh, maybe mm-hmm. offline about how I, I believe the only reason they released the game when they did is because they were trying to make sure Capcom was trying to make sure the game would would count for this fiscal year. Because their fiscal year ends in uh, Monday. Yep. It's the end, the end of their fiscal year. And so when you have told investors, you, you can count on the revenue being generated from the, the, the release of this highly anticipated game within this, this fiscal year, and your dividends will reflect that then you're going to release the game, whether it's ready or not. And it clearly was not ready. Wasn't fully, but was not fully optimized at all. And what we're getting with them, you know, already knowing a lot of the issues that people are complaining about, already knowing what they need to do to uh, alleviate those issues on all platforms. they're doing what a lot of developers do is where they take what would have been things that they were going to do post launch. And then they just add the things that they were, they were planning to do, you know, in the, maybe the next last two months in the, in the next two months, if they had two more months to actually optimize the game before launch and the, and they're just adding those optimizations into their uh their their typical updates and so i mean here we are you getting this you know there's people who just don't want to acknowledge that for some reason you know i think <laughs> they, I they, they yeah you don't blame them they they, they, they don't want to acknowledge that the game is is poorly poorly optimized i mean it, well i, I mean, just think that's listen, very it's, weird it's, pre- it's pretty bad i mean i'm not i don't i wouldn't want to be attached to that that fungus either but it's you know i'm just talking no i'm just i'm just being funny about it but no it's it's really it's sad it's 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 to the point where it, we don't have that as a topic but i guess we could really just break it down a little bit uh 
we it's never gonna change bro no matter how much more power we get like people are up here talking about you know because everybody you know wants the ps5 pro because they feel like you know we're getting to the point where this generation is getting kind of everything's getting caught up to it and we want better performance but you know what's gonna what's gonna happen when the ps5 pro comes out um slow-mo our game's gonna uh, magically run better no. our, no, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So we want it's, to go it's be, especially considering the CPU of the, the PS5 Pro isn't that much better than the CPU for the PS5. Uh, the the games that have the worst performance on consoles are typically games that are more CPU bound. Some 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 games aren't. Like for example, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Like the the two modes aren't very good um final fantasy 16 as well you know those games just weren't um i I just think when it came to performance square enix just didn't just didn't do a good job overall on those games but when it comes to having like the games like gotham's night um uh um, dragon's dogma 2 games that are are very cpu intensive like there's just you're gonna have to deal with it, man. Because <laughs> that is very much there's not much you can do with a Zen 2 CPU in consoles. So it is what it is, man. No, it it is, it is. And I think in general, it just comes back to this game, Dragon's Dogma, isn't even running the greatest on a PC. Whereas, you know, you can have some of the best hardware. And you got to brute force it with some. You got to like, brute. Real... Bru- so you got to brute force yeah. it, and we know you ain't brute force it with no console. <laughs> right, like like I get, I can get, I can get between that with max settings, ray tracing, and all that out in the open world as I'm just you know doing my thing. Ninety to one hundred and ten, yeah, one hundred and ten frames per second. It fluctuates between there, may drop into the 80s and high 70s when it's like crazy stuff is going on, like I'm fighting a dragon, it's spells flying everywhere and, you know, all that stuff. It'll drop into the 70s, the high 70s at that point. But when I go into a city, I'm I'm basically going between 55 to 65 frames, 70 frames per second. Maybe okay, 55 to 75 frames per second is what it, it fluctuates between. And so it's uh it's unacceptable to have like that big of a drop in frame rate just by going into the city. And I and I think they understand they acknowledge that because they said they're 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 gonna work on it. But it just shouldn't have been launched in that in that state in the first place. In my no, opinion. It, yeah, it, exactly. And I think that's the the um the biggest um uh, talking point when it comes to that. So before we get into the, the main part of the show, slow mo, I have oh, to ask oh, you. Go ahead. Some some I've been playing some more rogue company. Oh <laughs> lord. Yeah, I, I went back to that. Um I did play a little bit of the finals season two, which is all right, you know, it's okay. Um, I haven't played any Helldivers. Um, I, I think it's mostly because my friends haven't really been playing. I've only really been playing it with them. Um, I've been playing a little bit more Cyberpunk. And I think that is it as far as what, what I've been playing. Uh, oh, I've been playing Mass Effect Legendary Edition on PC. Yeah, I noticed that when I was um all in 4K glory, you know. I was yeah. sitting on my couch last night playing <laughs> I was playing Pokemon Go and yeah. I was look and <laughs> shut up. I was playing Pokemon Go and I just happened to go look at Discord and I don't know what made me go look at Discord. I looked at Discord and it was showing um I guess it was a new, yeah, they had just did a new update for iOS and I saw the friends list and I said, oh, that's cool. It puts little boxes at the top now. And when I looked, I was like, slow-mo, did it said Mass Effect LE, you know, LEG. And I was like, oh, he played Legendary Edition. Let's go. (laughs) And then I proceeded to continue to catch the Pokemon I was catching. 
but um on my couch by the way in a game that is meant to be played on the go but you know. yeah <laughs> hey listen my house has How a lot are you of Pokemon doing that? Right. my my house has a lot of no seriously my house i live right i i literally have a pokestop like literally probably about 50 to 100 yards away so when you're i don't know do you know what gps drifting is where your gps no. do you know so it's basically oh, wait. Where yeah sorry yeah, yeah when it where, where your gps is basically telling you you're in one location where you're really not there it's it's, mm-hmm. it's like usually off by like 50 feet or something like that so sometimes when i'm sitting in my living room the gps is basically telling my phone that it's 50 feet up the street and it's close enough to that pokestop where i can still like play and catch pokemon there every once in a while so yesterday just happened to be one of those nights so I was sitting up there looking at it and I was like, oh shit, I can catch some Pokemon without even going outside right now. So I was doing that. And um, let me tell you something. That game is so therapeutic. It is so fun. So I don't even want to tell you how much money I spent on it. Oh, so so you're a whale now. You're a whale for Pokemon. I might be, I might be, um, I might okay, be, look, look, I north might be of $500. Microsoft levels. I might be, I might be Microsoft levels of well in that game so north of a thousand dollars no it was well, no, not that high oh, okay well it, that's, that's not well that's not well territory yet okay good good what the, a, a thousand dollars is it well territory no okay good okay i'm nowhere near that i am i am invested more than a couple of hundred though that's nothing that's yeah, nothing it's not, no it's not that bad it's especially since i've been playing it off and on since 2018 but the game's fun because it gets you out and rocking and running and doing all types of stuff and like i literally get up and this is just me talking about the stuff i've been doing this lets you know how much i'm having fun playing it slow-mo i haven't even booted up battlefield since last week when i talked about it on this show that season seven had just started and i haven't logged in one time since then because all i've been doing like literally every moment that i've been awake I've been looking at my phone, trying to try to max out my Pokedex. And on top of that, I've been working on like YouTube stuff on the background. You know, I've been working on the um the stuff for the show. Uh, got a little bit further in that. Uh so I kind of hunkered down and didn't do anything um outside of you know playing that and then working on YouTube and a little bit of Final Fantasy. That's kind of what I've been doing. I also been getting caught up on a couple of TV shows and stuff. And this is what I wanted to ask you. Mm-hmm. Marvel. 97. X-Men 97, I should say, not Marvel. Marvel's X-Men 97. Did you watch yesterday's episode? Yes, I did. Oh my god. <laughs> let me let me just say this real quick. All right. Like so look. I used to I used to I, I don't I don't collect comics like I used to. Oh, before you um, before I, you said I want I'm gonna give you your, before you say that, I want to give you your flowers on this because I was like, what the heck are you talking about last week? It was, I think it was, uh, I forget what show we were on, but you said, this is the Scott Summers. This is the Cyclops that we all should want. Not that watered down one that was getting beat up by Wolverine all the time in the, in the TV, in the, in the cartoon show. And let me tell you, bro, this is, this is a real Scott Summers. <laughs> Thank Yes. Yeah, this Scott is, Summers with like, a brain. This is a real Scott Summers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, Scott Summers with some stones. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, like, 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 like Scott Summers. That no, look. So, yo, the, the I was watching the the third episode, and so like for me, I um when I was 11, this is like early 90s. I uh, started reading comics. My very first comics I started reading were X Men, and back then. Um, who is legendary comic book writer Chris Claremont was writing for the X-Men. All the great storylines that we know of the X-Men have originated from Chris Claremont's work in the 90s. And he and Jim Lee, who is, the, the, to me, the best comic book artist ever, were like this legendary tag team duo where the the visual, the, the, the actual penciling was epic and the writing was awesome so i'm my very first comic ever is uncanny x-men 281 and then and and that was then i went and grabbed 
X Men number one, mm-hmm. which not the from the nineteen sixty three. X Men. Because I mean, like I couldn't afford that, right? But the nineteen ninety one X Men number one, where it's like the first three issues was this epic thing with Magneto and the X Men, and it was a nice run from like issue one to like eleven before Cl- Chris Claremont and Jim Lee both left, uh, and Jim Lee went to go start Image Comics. You know, I'm now I'm really getting into nerd territory here, but but the, the drawback. The storylines that they're doing right now, like I, after that, I kind of went started going back into like my comic book store, going into back issues and reading further back into things that happened before them with the X Men. Episode number three of X Men ninety seven goes through the the uh, the 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 not the Dark Phoenix saga, but the Madeline Pryor Goblin Queen saga. Mm-hmm. And it, my only complaint is that it ended too soon because they, they did it all in one episode. And I was just mm-hmm. like, they, they could have gone about two, two more episodes with that because it's so good. It, it, the only thing really missing out of it were uh, um, the Marauders weren't there, um, weren't in it. And some of the X-Men that were in the comics weren't there. Um, but it's it's great. It's like to me, it's it's the best like animated thing going right now. Even though Invincible is back and Invincible is pretty still pretty good, X Men ninety seven is better than Invincible. So uh, uh, nerd comic talk in 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 animation talk over. Uh, it's 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 pretty damn good. Yeah, I yeah. The first time I why my wife I told you my wife came in the basement the other day was like. Why didn't you tell me this was a thing? I was like, yo, I forgot to tell you, man. We sat there. We watched um, the first two episodes last week. And um, I was my mouth was my jaw was on the ground. I was like, oh, this is so good. <laughs> and then it didn't watch. So, so you watched episode. all three episodes? Yeah, you watched all three. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I watched last night. There's no waiting. It was no waiting. I was. And this and the cool thing about this is a legit 30 minutes, bro. You know, before we was like 22 and some change because we mm-hmm. had cartoon breaks. I mean, uh, uh, commercial breaks and stuff. This is like a legit 30 minutes. And I'm like, yo, this is this is awesome. But uh, anybody that hasn't checked it out, if you know, if you if you if you want some good MCU stuff, go check out that old cla- those old classics, bro, that they just redid. And um, I, I think the only thing that throws it off a little bit is um, just getting used to the voice actors again because <laughs> they're the original voice actors from over thirty years ago, and some of them don't sound all that great anymore. But once you get <laughs> hey, look, man. like like what's his name trying, trying to get role? that voice just right? Yeah, the girl that plays yeah. the lady, yeah, she sound all she already had a raspy yeah. voice as it is, but now it sounds even worse. So I'm sitting there like it did. Uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Wolverine sound like a pirate. <laughs> Yeah, they they, they're kind of. I do like how they're kind of like compounding um, certain subplots from the comics together. Like, um, so at at one point in the comics, Rogue had lost her powers, and she was like stranded in the Savage Land with Magneto, and you know some things happen. You know, every every time Rogue lo- lose her powers and she can touch people, oh, she'd be doing some touching, right? So like, like it, it's <laughs> um, so, some things happen, you know. And then and then if you if you know from like the now I'm about to get real nerdy, the Age of Apocalypse um 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 event where all the X Men went um well. Xavier's son went back in time trying to kill Magneto, but accidentally killed his own father, which erased him from the timeline, and then changed the future where there was no X-Men to stop Apocalypse from being Apocalypse, and then he took over the, the whole United States, North America, and Magneto then tried to lead the X-Men against him and he married Rogue because he could use his powers to keep from her powers hurting him. And it's just, they're kind of adding those things into the show while also around that same time um, in the comics, um, 
Gambit is is in Rogar thing, and so it's like this little love triangle going on. And it's like that wasn't originally in the comic, but I I, I like it because because you, they're taking two things that were from the comics, but ha- having them happen at the same time, and just uh, naturally allowing the the friction that's there to kind of blossom. I like it. I like it. It's yeah, I good. like it. A, yeah. I like it a lot too. Yeah. You're right. I I cannot um. I could not um, speak even more highly about what I saw than what you just said. So, I also, that. I did watch Invincible today, the latest episode of Invincible. Oh, what do you think? Invincible, about it? Um, the first, like, so they took a long break. The, the first three or four episodes of the season, I was like, mm. but since they came off the break, oh, they've been hitting it on all cylinders. It's pretty good. Okay. So Invincible's uh, back. Hmm. Yeah, I um, I haven't looked at that, and I haven't even. I forgot it was actually back too. So a lot of people forgot it was back. I think they took that break at the worst possible time, but yeah, probably yeah, so. That's what it is. Um, All right, cool. You want to get well, into these topics? Man? Yeah, let's get. You want to do this? Yeah, let's get into the first topic and shout out to um, the chat, man. We really appreciate all you guys being here and listening to us nerd out over, you know, X-Men and all of those great things that, um, you know, most of us in this community grew up with because there's a lot of old heads out there. There's more old heads. Than it, and that's the funny thing. The old heads are the ones that's out there causing the most trouble. <laughs> Oh right. yeah, um, <laughs> yes. it's, it's not even the young kids. Young cats out here, just, like looking at the old cats, like you're too old for this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's kind of what it is. That's why I stay in my lane, bro. But um, yeah, let's talk about it, man. Uh, Stellar Blade, um, coming to um, PS5 in the very new future. There was a situation where the demo got leaked out. Well, not leaked out. Got released early than it was supposed to. Some people mm-hmm. got a chance to get a chance to play it early um, for a few hours before they for a they, few uh, hours before they they, 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 it. Yeah. they they severed connections with you, and uh, a lot of people were upset about that because it was already it, you know what it did it kind of brought up the conversation around DMR again DRM again I mean where people is like yeah even if it's on your hard drive they can yeah yeah DMR it. is a gun <laughs> yeah yeah DMR is a gun DRM <laughs> is the digital rights management yes they um. <laughs> It brought that conversation up again because people were really, really upset that they went into their consoles and basically took something that they already had access to. So that brought up that whole conversation again. But just be just happy not- you got you got to play something you wasn't supposed to play you for a few hours. To. Exactly. So with that being said, they finally did announce that the um the actual gameplay demo gameplay, the demo's coming out tomorrow, March 29th. With the feature that all of your progress in the game that they allow you to do carries over to the final game. Um, nice. That's uh, that's cool. And I'm actually really, really interested, more interested in playing the demo because sometimes demos are something that I kind of stay away from just for the simple fact because I don't want to retread the ground that I already retreaded the first time around. So mm-hmm. that's, this is going to make me want to do it. So slow mo, what, what, what do you, did you get a chance to play the demo or did you miss out on the demo the first time through? You know I work from home, but the one day, the, <laughs> the I've, one day. I, I maybe like maybe like a handful of days out of the year, I have to go into my office and work. The one the day that demo came out had to be on a day I was in the office. I was so mad when I saw people were playing it, and so I I initially I was like, all right, we'll bet you know the demo's out. I didn't realize it was coming out. I um I went on the PlayStation app and found the demo well no i was trying to find the demo and i was like well i can't find it you know why is it everyone else is, keeps talking about how they're they're you know they got the demo and i can't find the demo only found that they had already pulled it and now and now it was a mistake and i was like what? damn it I, if i was at home i could have I, you know i probably would have saw it sooner and i would have would have been able to play it but um so so I didn't see the demo, but I do like demos in general, especially if it's a game where I don't I'm not quite a hundred percent certain that I want it or not. Now mm-hmm. Stellar Blade was something that I was uh interested in back when it was called Project Eve and I did a video on it. Um yeah. I don't know what's going on with your gameplay. It's like 
Yeah, it's definitely I, crazy. I'm looking at my my computer is actually doing something crazy right now. I'm wondering why my um, memory's up to 77 percent right now on here. <laughs> oh boy. Um. And exactly. So uh, I uh I was always I'm I'm getting in this game, but I wanted to get it on PC because when because when it was Project Eve, it was a multi platform game that was going to be on PlayStation, Xbox, and PC. Uh, you know, PlayStation got involved, uh, Shift Up, the developer, became a second-party developer of of PlayStation. Now the game is um, console-exclusive. Um, no release date uh, as of this time for PC. And I don't know, you know, like, there's no timetable on that. It could be six months, it could be a year, it could be longer than that. I don't know. But... Uh, if it's a game that I'm, you know, like uh, as usual with me, if it's a game that I'm hyped for, I'm not going to wait. And being able to play the demo allows me to be able to kind of make that decision. If it's something that's like, I mean, it's cool, but it's, I'm not all that hyped for it. And, um, then I'll wait for PC where I can, you know, max it out. And it's not playing like like this video is. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, um, from the gameplay I've seen, and, and, and look, let's just keep it a buck here, okay? Let, let's 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 not beat around the bush. No Diddy, right? Let's not beat around the bush. <laughs> we know we know why people are going to play this game, okay? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we we know we know why people are hyped for this game. And, and 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 it's it's got some some killer assets. I'll say that right. Some killer assets that, it and does. that's the reason why people want to play the game. That said, it's great when you have a game with great assets and it also plays well. You know, like like people love Bayonetta, and I think probably the initial reason why people started playing Bayonetta, had nothing to do with anything but how Bayonetta looks, Bayonetta looks, but then they played the game. It was like, hey, this is a good playing game. You know, it's one of the few times Platinum actually delivers. Uh, mm -hmm. Another one is uh, near Automata. You know, people love the character design of 2B. You know, they even put in a trophy or a achievement for I mean, which is I, I'm thinking, you gotta be kind of weird to do this. But if you, it, it I ain't even gonna say it. Look, because it's just weird. It just makes me feel weird to even say it. This is a, a tr trophy for perverts out there. Okay, I just know that. And but near Automata has a great story, good gameplay. This is you know like there there are people who who will come for the eye candy and then stay for the gameplay. And what I've seen from the gameplay looks pretty good. And it's just like, so, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm hyped to play the demo to see exactly how good it really is. And, and the, the fact that the progress carries over, that's just a bonus to me. And I, I think, uh, oh, did they announce how long the demo is? Mm, no, I don't know. It, it's probably the same. It's probably the exact same demo that they uh, mistakenly released early. So I don't know how long. I think someone may have said that was like an hour or two or something like that. So it's probably not very long. Oh, that's not that but bad. but I'm 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 hyped to be able to to get in there and see what it's all about. And you know, it'll, that for me will determine whether it's a day one cop next month on PS5 or whether I'm just going to, you know, wait for it to show up on on PC, you know, play oh, it max so out settings and all that good stuff. I said I'm just chat. So, this is this is not how y'all know Forte exactly, don't listen to anything I'm saying. I, I know exactly what you're saying, so I just No, cuz I said I repeated it multiple times what I, I was going to do. Slow -mo. I'm just, no oh you God, didn't. Stop you you, ain't, you, you, you don't you don't listen. You don't listen. Oh, my back. I'm, I'm, I got a back pain now just because it's my fault. It's my fault you don't listen. Okay. It's, my, it's your fault that I have my back hurts right now. Hey, no so, Diddy, man. Come on now. You can't say stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, but, hey, but, hey, at least I ain't outside <laughs> pressing by my front yard like, what we gonna do? What we gonna do? <laughs> oh, man, dog. 
What did it say? We ain't going, we can't, we ain't stop. We can't stop now. <laughs> Man, dog, did he even? That, that whole situation is wild, bro. Whew. Man, it's a whole bunch of stories out there on that one, but we, we, we know we go, you know, we're going to talk about that on Scumcast. So we'll save that all for that show. <laughs> right, right. It's going to be a um, big conversation on that show about it. What are you about to say? No, I'm looking at this thing we, where there's other. I guess we can move on to the next topic now because we didn't really got a- anything else to say. Yeah, but no, Ben let's, Studio. Let's, let's talk about Ben Studios job listing shows project lead for a de- uh, in development AAA live service game uh, that's going to be um, developed by Ben Studios. So uh, we do know that they scaled back significantly um, what they were doing in live service games um, by. You know, not just the layoffs, but the closure of, of one studio and the layoffs in general. And the fact that, you know, a lot of the games like the Spider-Man, well, rumored that the Spider-Man, um, the Great Web is uh, also being canceled or something like that. So all this stuff is just rumors. But Slomo, um, what do you think about, you know, Bend possibly making a triple a live service game and do you think this is something that people would like what kind of game do you think i mean yeah what what do you think this could possibly be if it is i have no idea uh, honestly um but it, I, I just think it's fascinating that uh they initially were trying to do days gone too and they internally canceled that and then now they're doing a live service game. It's just because it, cause I, I, I think what PlayStation is better off doing is having, I mean, like you may have some studios that can do both, but having studios do what they're good at. And I don't know if Sony Bend is equipped Equip. for this kind of yeah. for for this live service game now if they if they opened this had like if they started a second team and and brought in people who were you know experienced in doing this kind of stuff to kind of help guide them through it i mean that's a different story because like we've seen we've seen developers shift gears and do different kind of games before and be successful at it and so mm-hmm. i'm not saying that sony ben can't do that but the chances of it being great or really, really good, or you know, we have to be honest, not as high as it is if it's a it's a single player game that they are more familiar with. Um, right. That's it. I didn't like Days Gone. Like I really didn't like that game. And what you did, what did you not like about it? Because I mean, for me. It 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 seemed like it it started out pretty cool, but then it just got to that part where it dragged on quite a bit, and um, I just don't think the story was compelling enough to keep you engaged in it. But what was your issues with it? Uh, main character kept muttering to himself all the time. That was really oh, yeah. annoying me. Um, that was the <laughs> first thing. My wife. Um, this. The second thing was I kind of felt it was it was somewhat janky with with like movement and animation. Um, I didn't really, I, I, and it may have been because this happens with me sometimes. I'm just sometimes I'm not in the right headspace for certain games, mm-hmm. and I may be overly critical of a game uh, because it's, it's I may be kind of uh, a little too done with a particular kind of genre. But like I, I got it when it was on sale. It was like twenty bucks at one point. It wasn't at launch. It's after because I remember at launch it was it was pretty bad as far as performance goes and bugs and they they were like dropping the update. When it first came out. I mean, did you play it on? PC? No, I play. I played, I played it on play. No, I got it on PlayStation for like twenty bucks. It was it was like on. Uh, oh shoot. Yeah, which you know people talk about. Oh, well, the game sold pretty good. But it didn't really hit those it sold like at 1999. That's what it right. Sold. Yeah, it, it didn't sell it for full price. You know, for the bulk of the the total sales there. Um. So, yeah, it, it just it, it just wasn't. I wasn't feeling the game when it came out. Maybe if I played it today, I might feel differently on PC. You know, because I'm not going. I ain't, ain't going to play it in the, in the I compromise think I own it experience. On PC. But now that I think about it, yeah. me, I'm about to look at my Steam account. I think I do. Oh yeah, I do own it. I own it on PC. Didn't even know it. <laughs> um, 
I mean, I mean, that's it. Like, I this that's no guarantee. Like the, that the game, like their new game, is going to play like that. When I'm not trying to pass judgment on Sony, then. But I'm not. They're they're not a studio that I've enjoyed their 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 content before. So I'm not really checking for it like that. Although right. you know me, I will play any multiplayer game. I will give a shot just because I like playing multiplayer games. So I'll still play it. But um, I just uh, I'm not as hyped for this as I as I would be for a another studio making a multiplayer game. That that's a uh, you know, just just kind of how I feel. What about you, man? What do you think about it? Uh, I mean, Days Gone, like I said, was a boring game. And um, to me, it's not even really about Days Gone. Okay, so the biggest thing that I look at on this is, if this is true, why did Days go? Why did Sony, why did Sony Ben keep their live service game, but you cancel Factions? And you, hey, and, hey, look, that might be a feather in their hat that that with their idea and their pitch is actually pretty good. We well, don't know. That's yeah, that's true. We don't know what it is, but I'm just sitting here thinking, like, especially okay, think about the Spider Man game. We, we, if, if that game actually did get canceled, we actually saw mm-hmm. it. We mm-hmm. saw it. <laughs> if that's true. How did Exomniac, the ga- the studio that literally released the most games on the PlayStation 5 platform to date <laughs> as a first party studio, how did theirs get canceled? I, I actually think the Spider-Man multiplayer thing got canceled not because it uh it, they didn't think it was going to be successful. I I, I think it, it actually has something to do for uh similar reasons why EA has canceled um Disney licensed games that people who had played it or their, seen it. They don't want to bog their studios down with them or something. No, no. EA has canceled uh, um, some live, some not live server. Sorry. Um, Star Wars games that they have been working on that apparently were like really good games um, that no one will ever play, unfortunately, because they didn't think that it would sell enough to justify the, the, contract they have with disney and how much they have to give to disney so okay that's and, true and, that, that makes sense yeah and andrew wilson has spoken on that before um that the disney deal the exclusive deal they have with disney predates him being ceo so you know you know how people are when it like it ain't my deal so i can talk all kinds I can of talk you freely know about it <laughs> right because i ain't make it so i don't feel need feel the need to defend this, this not is a, just this is a jack Tritton deal. <laughs> <laughs> right, like so, this this deal wasn't a good deal for us, and he and 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 they have only really approved of the deals they thought they could make a lot of money off of and justify the the work they were putting into it. And so I kind of look at like we due to the the hack for, of Insomniac last year, we got to see what the contract detail details are for Wolverine. And if you look at like some of the the revenue um, that is is the uh, the revenue percentages that are going to Disney for this, like if that's consistent for anything that Insomniac does with with Marvel properties, yeah, I could see how they may have kind of felt like this would be if this doesn't take off like we might be in jeopardy because there's a particular part of the contract that talks about potential termination and if certain revenue goals aren't hit then disney can has the rights to terminate the deal and if that goes for the entire spider-man ip i mean i don't know for for certain, but if that's the case, I can see them not wanting to take the risk on something that's not going to be a sure bet. Yeah, because because <laughs> they don't because they 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 they've said before they want Spider Man to be in gaming to be synonymous with PlayStation. You don't want to jeopardize your your exclusive like you know rights to that on a game that you're not quite certain is going to be a hit. Now, I mean, all that stuff is the business side of things. As a gamer, I would would have wanted to play it. I would have right. loved to play it. I but... think that's the thing for a lot of gamers. You know, part of me 
thinks of the situation being, uh, like you said, that is kind of the uh, valid point you're making there, because I think it's also tied to why PlayStation came out with a bundle for the slim system. Think about this. They mm-hmm. did a they did a bundle. They had a PlayStation 5 bundle over the holiday that came with Spider-Man, which was the original system for five. And they have to do that. They have they to have do to, that. They have to do they they, have this to. in the contract. They have to do the bundle. And and I think uh if I I might have a screenshot of those uh those uh yeah, the, excuse do, me, those, those deals. It was but like it's 50% like percent revenue. <laughs> Yeah, it, it's something really high, and I'm like, I don't know if that's like the revenue on the entire bundle, bundle, or just the game. But if, no, that, the if that's bundle. the case, they are losing their shirt off those bundle deals because, like, Disney's getting not just revenue off of the the you know the game; they're getting revenue off the sale of the system, which yep. already, you know, like they they're not making they're not making a profit off the sale of the system by itself so if you got to give a, a significant portion of your revenue over to to disney for that i mean you're going to do it in order to keep the contract but mm-hmm. yeah that that look that's 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 kind of rough to have to deal with that every time you drop a game and but that's going to guarantee when when wolverine comes out there's going to be a a bundle for PS5 Pro or PS5, one of those, and Wolverine. And when they do it with Venom, when Venom comes out, it's going to be the same thing, same way they had it with Miles Morales and Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 2018. They're just going to keep doing that, even with X-Men. When X-Men comes out and Spider-Man 3, they're going to keep doing the same thing because they have to. It's in, it's in the contract. Yeah, and the, the other thing comes back to... But not only were that's the thing, Samo. So not only were they losing <laughs> hand over fist money on those bundles, and because they were taking pretty much forty to fifty percent of it, then with the slim, they just released that recently, and you can buy. Remember when they released it? They released the slim, the digital slim, for four forty nine, the digital one, and then the disc one was five hundred. But then for some strange reason, like two weeks, like a month later, we got Spider-Man bundles in Slim. And they were cheaper. The Spider-Man digital system, Slim, mm-hmm. was $399. The, the physical one was $449, which is $50 cheaper than they sell the system <laughs> without the games in it. So Every time I hear about this, all this situation about with Spider-Man and how many copies of the game, like with Marvel and everything, how many copies of the game they have to sell in order to keep the license and stuff. It just seems like why the system's already selling good. Why would you entice people to buy the Spider-Man bundle over the regular system where, you know, I mean, I get why you want people to buy the spider but you, well, 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 you, well, you got you got to hit those more. revenue goals. You got hit. You got to get those revenue. You, that means they really. Well, I remember at one they point must have been when really short on how many copies of that game they were supposed to sell. Because oh, I, you know I don't they do know count. if it was. I don't know. I I I'll need to find the document again. I can't. I, I wrote. I don't remember if it was a a dollar amount they had to hit or if it was a a number I amount. I, I think it it may have been both for the, depending both. on. Yeah, so like I, I think they basically want it for people. If you have the option, we want you to buy this bundle and not just the PlayStation Five. If you have the option between the two, so look, we're gonna make it cheaper for the for the 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 bundled PlayStation Five. So it's a no brainer. You know, like you're you're going to get the bundle, whether you want Spider Man or not. Yeah, it's cheap. You're going to get this one. You're going to get this one because instead of just getting the regular PS5, I remember at one point when they were selling a bundle. Uh, I remember not being able to find a just regular PS PlayStation Five anywhere. Mm-hmm. Only thing I could find were bundles, and so like I, I think you know that's another way of going about it. You, you just don't sell the PlayStation Five without the bundle. Makes sense. I know we went on a big tangent here instead of talking about Sony Ben, but oh well, it's it's, <sighs> it's it's all about going into live service and stuff like that. So yeah, go ahead. 
No, um, I, I just kind of feel like they Sony Ben needs to find its identity. Um, like Days Gone, like that, you know, I think that's kind of a polarizing game. I, I think it's mid, but you know, there are people who really enjoyed it. There's people who who kind of you know hate it, whatever. But like they can't go back to that. That they're not doing the sequel. They, maybe this next game is is as Miko said in the chat, something that might be uh, um, building off of that world, that universe in Days Gone. But I I think they need to find their identity as a studio. Like what what are they going to be known for? And you know, like people look at some of the other studios that PlayStation has, like the like the upper tier. And you, you, if you think about Guerrilla Games, you think about Decima Engine, you think about, you think about um, Killzone, and then you think about the the Horizon games. You think about Naughty Dog. You think about Uncharted, The Last of Us. You think about Sony, Sony Santa Monica, God of War, Sucker Punch. You think about um, Infamous and and Ghost of Tsushima. So no one. I mean, yeah, you could say Days Gone, but Days Gone's not coming back. So what identity is Sony been going to have? And I think, like, whatever they do, I just hope that the game is successful enough that they can. this is what they can hang their hat on. And if it's going to be a live service game, we see now how certain live service games like The Last of Us Online got canceled because of the amount of resources they were going to have to dedicate to the game to make it successful. Not right. successful in the short term, but successful long term. So if this is going to be the direction that Sony Ben's going in, this is the full studio then. This, this isn't them like, hey, this is like a side project and and we're working on another single player game. No, this is everybody. This is the whole entire studio. And so uh, hopefully it's good because I, I don't, if it fails, you know, uh, I don't think by the time this comes out, the uh, um, um, Hiroki is going to be in charge. <laughs> but if whoever the new CEO is, is has the temperament that Hiroki does, uh, Sony Ben won't be around if this this game isn't successful. Yeah, um, and uh, I I think that is um, part of the the conversation. I, I found that document away i found the one from um the one from mark the x-men license terms which may be a little bit lower than the spider-man one but it's good i I, I have heard from someone else um that uh who i can't speak on but they have told me when it comes to those deals that the the structure of that contract that we saw with insomniac is Uh consistent upon any Disney contract with gaming. Okay. So so for maybe give or take some things, like if you're a third-party developer, then you can't do the whole bundling of a system. But if you're a platform holder, then yes, that is a, a, a part of it. But like the only thing that may differ is depending on how big the IP is, it may determine the 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 goals you know the the number goals the revenue goals how many copies go kind of goals thing like it, that that may be determined by how big the ip is like wolverine would definitely be considered something that should sell more than indiana jones so you right. know the, the numbers would be different so uh go ahead man uh because i i just cut you off no 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 you're good um the um here I'm gonna sh- okay so I'll just read it while I'm doing it. So right now PlayStation PlayStation console PS5 the commitment is six hundred and twenty one thousand six hundred six hundred and twenty one million comprised of one hundred and twenty million in development committed for each title required uh, title. Another 120 million in the aggregate for the provision of the fourth title, 30 million in marketing committed for each title required under title, 9 million recouped advanced for each uh, required title. Uh, releases, release all games by 2035, sell all games through at least 2038, and later if Mar- Marvel allows us to continue. Exclusivity. 
Between now and December 31st, 2035, Marvel cannot release or announce any X-Men games or console PC streaming or use an X-Men character as a competitive advantage in a game, i.e. play as Wolverine and Ultimate Alliance exclusively on the Xbox. X-Men characters can appear in multi multi-family uh, Marvel games, i.e. Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Marvel or like the Run- Marvel's rivals, you know, like, like rivals stuff like that. Is- Yep. And Marvel retains the rights to children's games and certain X-Men games from the 90s, but they cannot release or announce those within 45 days before or after release or announcement of any of our X-Men games. Marvel w- royalties. <laughs> Digital games, 9 to 18% of net sales. God. Physical games, wow. 19, 19 to 26% of net sales. DLC, 19 to 26% of net sales. Hardware bundles, 35 to 50% of Good wholesale yeah. bundle prices calculate, calculated as follows. Number of units divided by wholesale bundle price X applicable royalty rate for bundles by uh, applicable royalty rate. So, 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 okay, so that 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 answers it. It is the entire bundle. The pl- whole it is the bundle. cost of the PlayStation 5 console in addition to the game. That is, that's something. That's a, so termination. Neither party has the right to terminate the agreement for convenience. However, uh, if if we do not sell through at least six million units on PS5 PC combined of one of the three major titles in the first year after its PlayStation console release, uh, either party uh, may terminate the agreement. If they terminate, uh, we hold, must hold pay on, hold on, Marvel. Hold on. Go ahead. Hold on. The one of the three major titles. So yes, one of the three. Uh, my, so so Venom, Miles Morales. Uh, if they do, let's say if they do an X twenty three spinoff, uh, uh, a standalone game off of Wolverine, that wouldn't count. That wouldn't when they count. say the three, the main three, they're talking about Spider Man, X Men, and Wolverine. And Wolverine. Those three. Those three are the only ones that the termination is is due to. So, yep. mm, so when it come when we go back to the Spider Man game that then my hypothesis wouldn't be the reason that it got it got it, sh- it they didn't choose to go forward with it because if they chose to make that spider-man multiplayer game a standalone game it's not the main game it's not one of the main three spider-man 2018 spider-man 2 and spider-man 3 are the games that would that would trigger that termination if they don't hit the right sales. Wolverine and X Men are the other ones, and so that's it. So, um, yeah, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, I'll say this about it, and we, and we can move on. Yeah. Um, I would have at least because it, it, it appears we might get some DLC for Spider Man Two. But they haven't announced it yet, and I, the longer they go without announcing it, the long, the more I'm convinced we won't get it. Even though when they uh, uh, um, unintentionally had the uh, um, uh, had released the latest update for New Game Plus with the ability to go in and see stuff that you weren't supposed to see, um, I think, I think. Um, it showed that there was some uh that there was some uh um actual DLC that was present in the game but just isn't active and what the way I, I, I look at it at this point they have yet to do any announcing of any of that yet. If you go back to twenty eighteen when it comes to the Spider-Man 2018, we had an announcement of the DLC before the game came out. Yeah. When you did the the bigger, like, uh, um, deluxe edition or ultimate, whatever the highest edition was of buying the Spider-Man game, you got the DLC with that. Be- yeah. The fact they haven't announced any DLC whatsoever tells me there's just no DLC. 
And so I would have liked the least to have this multiplayer as DLC in this. Yeah, I, I agree with that. If if you weren't gonna go with the traditional route, but it is what it is. Yeah. So um and then the last part, neither party has the right to terminate the agreement or convince. However, if we do not sell at least 6 million units of the PS5, PS combined into three major titles, PlayStation consoles release, either, either party may terminate the agreement. If we terminate, we must pay Marvel $9 million breakup fee. Ah, we got to pay you to break up. Uh, plus all unpaid portions of all guarantees. If Marvel terminates, the forego fees are waived. <laughs> the result is that we would not develop any further titles under the agreement, but we continue to sell the titles that we already released before terminate. Wow. I, you know, every time you know, even the fact that I read that again, and we talked about that months ago, this was back in this message you sent me was back in December. <laughs> the fact that it's still <laughs> shocking that this is so but that just lets you know how 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 much power Disney has. The fact that yeah. they can literally tell them, like, there's if you do this, all the leverage is ours. Yeah. You don't get leverage, basically. So, all right. Well, that was that was a really good topic. I I'm very very um, but yeah. Shout out to um Sony Ben for being able to keep their live service game and let's let's hope the. Let's hope that they come up with something that a lot of people want to play. Um, yeah. Moving on to another uh, situation. Embracer has divested themselves of Borderlands developer Gearbox. Unfortunately, I guess um, they were able to get rid of, um, you know, the man before that happened. But it is R- what Randy it is. Randy Yes, Randy Pitchford. Try not to say his name too loud. You might might get <laughs> voodoo or something. But um. <laughs> No, nah, man, I actually don't have a problem with Randy Fishford. He just weird. But uh, I do because he, uh, I mean, he's. Well, he doesn't have good business I, practices I, when it comes to his people. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I think he's like the main that. reason why the Borderlands franchise is where it is right now. I think they have lost. Yeah. They have had a high turnover ratio at Gearbox due to him and his uh, basically him. I, I mean, all this stuff is unproven, but th- there's a lot of rumors and there are a lot of former developers that who used to work at Gearbox that feel like Randy has stolen from them, stolen their bonuses and given them to himself, himself, mm-hmm. um, uh, that he uh, and, and just, you know, frankly, uh, I haven't liked the guy since he back in when Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel were, oh, com- yeah. were out. And when the pre-sequel was on its way to coming out, I think the Borderlands pre-sequel was launching right around the time that the Xbox One and PS4 were coming out. And Randy Pitchford lied and said that the the pre-sequel would not be on the new consoles. It would just be on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. Yep. And, And then six months later, after the launch of the consoles, he 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 launches a version on <laughs> on Xbox One and PS4, and it's just like you just lied to get people to buy the game on you know uh, on on the older consoles. And, and after that, I was just like, screw this guy, he's 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 an awful businessman. But um, yeah, they <laughs> so says, screw this guy, he's awful. Yeah, he's terrible. Um, he uh, terrible. Embracer bought Gearbox as a who was an independent developer when this happened for one point one billion dollars. It just shows how bad Embracer was at business. Because even then, I was like, "Yo, that's too much money." And uh, Gearbox ain't worth all that. Now, the Borderlands right. franchise prints money, but that's the only thing that they have. And at at this time, due to you know Randy Pitchford and the high turnover at the studio. They they had not delivered on Borderlands games in a minute, so like, yeah, they they weren't worth the one point one billion. Right now they've sold them to Take Two, who I, I look, I'm you know what? No, yeah, I'm gonna give myself the, from some flowers here. I'm gonna pat myself on the back because I've been telling y'all Take Two was going to acquire Gearbox for the past like three months. Ever since Embracer started doing a fire sale on their on their assets and developers, I have been telling y'all 
that gear but when gearbox goes it will be take two that acquires them they had the means they got the money clearly Clearly. and they have a vested interest in making sure that gearbox is good because they publish the borderlands games now I don't know the, the the exact details of the deal. I don't know if they have like a lifetime publishing contract with Gearbox or if they got first right refusal. But either way, if, if it's first right refusal, they've never refused to publish the game because, like I said, it prints money for the most part. Um, every except for New Tales of the Borderlands, which is a, a abomination, every other Gearbox game has met the sales goals whether randy it uh will admit it or not um and and he in the only time the only times he he doesn't say it, it met sales goals is when he's telling his developers why they're not getting a bonus but <laughs> outside of that, that bonus in his pocket right outside of that the game sell and so uh, Take Two had a a a lot of interest in making sure that Gearbox is stable, and them having to deal with Embracer, uh, you know, being Embracer with really bad decision making and bad management just wasn't good for business for them. So yeah, like I like it, this is kind of a foregone conclusion as far as far as I'm concerned. Um, it, this oh, something else that came out of this is that we now know that Borderlands Four is in development, which yep. something that I already knew, um, and really isn't that big a surprise. You know considering say, do you care though, I do because I'm a I'm a fan of Borderlands, but it's I like too, I, but it's been they bad. are yeah they are in that category where Bioware where it is for me where I care about their next release. But I'm not under any like I'm not a fanboy for them where I make excuses for their their lack of quality. Right. So I'm not going to be like, oh, you know, the next Borderlands is going to be great because the the previous ones haven't been great. You know, like you know, like I, I I said um, when it came out that Borderlands Four was in development. I said, well, hopefully the story's better than Borderlands Three. You know, oh, and I got people yeah. people like, oh, what's wrong with Borderlands 3? I'm just like, oh, please shut up. Just just, just come on. Like, I'm not I'm not entertaining stupidity from people. What was wrong with Borderlands 3? Borderlands 3 story, everything. The fact that they tried to copy, in many ways, Borderlands 2 story, but they did it uh, worse. And then and, and, and I'm seeing people saying stuff like, like, the worst thing that happened to the franchise is that Handsome Jack was so popular. And I'm just like, that's stupid. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, stop making excuses for them just being really bad at writing stories. And they they haven't been able to do that since Anthony Birch left. And it's pretty freaking obvious. So I, uh, uh, right, right, Real Zero. It says you care, but your expectations are in check. Exactly. It's just how I feel about, you know, BioWare and Dragon Age and Mass Effect. Um, games is how I feel about Borderlands and Gearbox. Like I'm, I'm, I'm interested, but you know, I, I know who they are now, and who they are is not. <laughs> uh, do, you see, do you see what's on the screen? Aliens, Colonial Marines. Do you know? And I, oh my God, you don't understand. This is why I don't like Randy Pixford. This is why I don't like Gearbox as much anymore. Because we all know Aliens is my favorite franchise of all time. And I was really looking forward to this game. I bought this. This is the, you know, this is the very first game I pre-ordered on PC. Very first. I, I didn't never, know that. I never pre-ordered a game on PC. June came out on June 18th of 2016. And, um, I play every once in a while. What the last it says left. Oh, that's the last time I played it. Never mind. It didn't come out in 2016. It came out way earlier than that. But um every once in a while I try to load this game up and play it. And then I'm just super disappointed. I th that game is the biggest part of hurt for me when it comes to Gearbox. The only thing that saved it for Gearbox was Borderlands 2. 
Well, Borderlands yeah, well, 2 was I mean, freaking incredible. Cause it came out because Borderlands 2 ended up being Borderlands 2 because this game got scuttled. <laughs> it, yeah, that's what I was about to get into. It, here, here's more. Uh, it's kind of in the rumor unconfirmed category, but everyone kind of knows it's true. Um, Randy and Gearbox kind of swindled Sega, who swindled. published. Yeah, yeah, they they essentially I don't know what the language was with their their publishing contract, but essentially they were taking developers that Sega was paying for that was supposed to be working on Aliens Colonial Marines and then switching them over to Borderlands development. So in the time period that they were supposed to be de- making Aliens Colonial Marines, they had released Borderlands 1 and 2. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if Sega was just like new to publishing then or something, but like whatever deal they put together, they they basically just got just got you know, completely uh, uh, screwed over. Walk. They got dog. Walk yeah. in that deal. And good old Randy, you know, he 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 pulled the fast one on them, as well as the gamers. And that in that game, they they actually. Had had given that game over to a support studio to who was completely on like they didn't have the the skill set to get that done, and it was pretty obvious. And that just yeah, it's, it was a bad situation. And this, this is why you can't really trust uh, Randy Pitchford. But yeah, that's that's my, with yeah, they're they're they do some publishing as well. Um, under and they, they've been kind of yeah. It's been hit or miss. Like uh, the misses are, what was that game that was that came out at the launch of the PlayStation Five? And it was uh, from, from Gearbox. Well, it wasn't from Gearbox. It was from a, a developer called Counterplay Games, but it was published by Gearbox. I can't remember the name of it. It was uh, it was not good. It was it was really mediocre, but it looked nice and and people. Uh, oh, Godfall. Yes, Godfall. They published Godfall. Yeah, they published. Um, yeah, I remember they they published that game. But they also published Risk of Rain Two, which is actually really good. It's a real good roguelite. So they their publishing is pretty decent. It's just not like they're not like a guaranteed hit every time they they uh they publish a game but for as a developer they're they're a borderlands uh factory and they've yet to really deliver on i I don't think tiantina wonderland is 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 good either so like i said i'm just i'm just here like when they drop it if it's if if it's good i'll play it if it's not, then whatever. Yeah, if it's if it's not, yeah, that, and I think that's where a lot of people kind of sit on that one. It's like I I love Borderlands, but it just hasn't to me. It just hasn't been good. Like Borderlands Three was okay. It had great I, gameplay, great yeah. gunplay. The skill trees are good. Um, the characters, not so much. Not so the story, much. awful. Absolutely yeah. awful story. The antagonist, terrible. Those twins, the twins, who, the f- the f. Oh my! Like who, 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 whoever created them? Like you, you just don't write ever anything ever again in your in your existence as a developer because just you, you, you suck at it. They, the dialogue is awful. It's like there's a thing with Borderlands where it's it's inappropriate humor. It's kind of dark, but you you still laugh even though you know it's 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 messed up the laugh at what you just laughed at, and but it's at, it was actually funny when Anthony Birch left after Borderlands pre sequel. Yeah, they lost the fun. It wasn't. It's not funny anymore. And they try to do these jokes where it's like every now and I think in Borderlands three, I may have laughed like three times. And it's just like you're trying to be something like you don't have the writer writers in your narrative team to deliver on that that balancing act between dark, inappropriate humor, but but funny humor. And it's just they don't have it. 
Right. And I don't know why they did New Tales from the Borderlands instead of giving that over to New Telltale to do the way the old Telltale did the old one. But whatever they. So we'll see what happens, man. Maybe maybe now that they're owned by Take Two, Two K will have a firmer, uh, more firmer uh, ability to make sure there's a level of quality going on. But who knows? Right. So this is everything. So we can move on from this topic that kind of happened. Just the cliff net version of it. Embracer Group divests Gearbox Entertainment for a consideration of of USD four hundred and sixty million to Take Two Interactive Inc. Take Two will get the Borderlands and Tiny Tina Wonderlands franchise, as well as Homeworld, Risk of Rain, Brothers in Arm, and Duke Nukem. Embracer retains Cryptic Studios, Lost Boys Interactive, uh, Captured Division, Gearbox Publishing, San Francisco to be renamed prior to closing, including the publishing rights to Remnant franchise, the upcoming Hyperlight Break, and other notable unannounced game releases. I don't know how I feel about them keeping Remnant. When I saw that, I was like, what's going to happen to Remnant? <laughs> well, Rem- I mean, they keep in the IP, but they don't well, own, gu- the IP, own. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, they don't own gunfire games to develop. Okay, okay, that, okay, that's that's what. OK, that's what I was. OK, so they don't own gunfire. So basically, they can still go out and and secure gunfire to make the game for them. They're just keeping the IP. Right, right, right. Okay, if if that's the case, then and, I'm, and Gunfire I'm is the talent. If if they want to do something different after two, I mean, sh- look, look, it's not like Remnant from the Ashes and Remnant Two has great story. Like that's not no. why anybody plays no, you play, the Remnant yeah. games. Yeah, you the, play, you play it because you're getting you're getting a nice Souls like with guns and really <laughs> difficult bosses and it, and 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 you know. It's great. It's great. Like it, it's, it's. I love rem- the Remnant games, even though both endings are probably among the worst <laughs> endings I've ever seen in a we game. I mean, game we was like, "What is happening?" <laughs> oh my gosh, the ending makes you just uh, want to go. Do y'all need some help? I mean, like, <laughs> you want to outsource? <laughs> you want to outsource your writing to somebody? Because right. good grief. Right. But like the sad thing is that the ending for two is just barely better than the ending for one. The ending for one is is just come on, man. But like no, like it's Gunfire Games is the talent. If they go make a brand new IP, I'm there for them. I'm not there for Remnant. You know, I'm there because the developer themselves have proven to be good. And so yeah, whatever. Like they, they, that Embracer still owns the IP. I mean, they, they're not really a publisher like that anyway. They would just take their cut and allow the IP to be used anyway. So it's not that big a deal to me. Cool. All right, let's move over to uh, the next topic. Oh, before we do that, slow mo. If what was I? Mm-hmm. T- if I was to tell you, this Taz is in here. Shout out to Sure Taz, my homie, my Destiny brethren. If I was to tell you that I logged into Destiny the other day because. There was a Bungie put out a they're putting out an update that's going to bring back some really cool things that I miss, and I was to tell you I was gonna probably fall back in. What would you tell me? <sighs> um, I haven't I fallen in yet, you, but this is probably the closest they got me because they're they, they're they're pulling on some heartstrings with some weapons that's coming back. <laughs> So what would you tell oh, me man. to keep me keep me from falling back in? Because I did log Nothing, in yesterday. Man. You, you 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 are free to make this disgusting decision if you want to. I I, I have nothing. to oh, say. Oh, you're not you're not even gonna you're not even nope. gonna not okay. even gonna try to try to Blaze save you. Says don't stay strong. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Uh shout out to Blaze. What up, Blaze 4K? Um, all right. Well, let's move on to the next topic. Marble Rivals Impressions. Uh, we talked about this a little bit on a couple of other shows. Let's bring our um our thoughts to this one. Um lot I was it, it was Amy Amy Hen Amy Henney was the one that came out of stage. They showed off the tech No, 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 no. That's not, not Marble Rivals. That wasn't Marble Rivals. Which one was that? That one? was that was 
Marvel's 19... 1943? 43, yeah. That's what that one was. Yeah. yeah, I just got my Marvels mixed up. Marvel's Rivals, what did you think of the overall um, announcement of that when you saw it for the first time? Well, I mean, it's a it's an Overwatch clone. Exactly. <laughs> and a, I don't even know I if mean, it's it, going to be a good one. Right, right. So, look, it looks like Overwatch, but does it play like Overwatch? Who knows? Like I, I don't I don't know for certain. Um, I'll try it though. I mean, like it's like I played Overwatch for a bit, and I, I thought I you know I, I had uh I had, I had some good times with it. Um, it's not something that like today in 2024 I'll play as like my main game to play, but it's all right. You know, I'm not I'm not uh I'm not knocking it, but I don't think um I don't think this game is really going to steal like the play like because like hero shooters aren't all that popular today now Mm -hmm. so you you really are just basically trying to steal players away from valorant and from 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 overwatch they do have an opportunity now because of you know the stupidity that is uh (laughs) that um that is blizzard when it comes to overwatch and how they treated it so there is a chance that they could actually like you know fill some of these really disgruntled overwatch players that have been waiting for blizzard to get their act together but that would be cool i don't know i mean like like it, it it's still like looking like the game um and and, and I, i've always said this about hero shooters it, it's it's people hate to admit this but the appeal to hero shoot part of the appeal to hero shooters is how the characters look. True. If you got some ugly looking characters like in Bleeding Edge, ain't nobody gonna care. They're just not. They, they you know, like it's they they won't stick around if the game is kind of mid. But if your characters look cool, you know, you, you, you like like I've said multiple times, you can't go just Google Overwatch characters. You're gonna end up seeing some stuff you ain't mean to see. Cause people get, you know, kind of obsessive over over it. And I think some of that that uh appeal where people um build up this 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 love for certain the way these characters look and and if you give the characters stories, backstories, you know, flesh them out a bit, it really allow it allows people to stick around with a game when there are lulls in content. And this is, is also better for those live service hero shooters when you're coming out with uh, uh, microtransactions that are cosmetic, right? You're, you're getting new skins for your favorite hero in that game. And, and that's easy for Marvel Rivals to do because it's all everyone's favorite characters anyway. True. Sure. We saw Iron Man. We saw we saw like Captain America, Storm. There's a, 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 a the Incredible Hulk. There's so many characters that people already know. There, there's just like, well, it's just it's a, it's a no brainer uh, when it comes comes to that, and that that people are going to be into it, and people are going to be getting the skins for these characters and everything. It's just you know, is it going to play good? And that's that that remains to be seen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I I, I kind of think that too. Um, the biggest thing for me is Overwatch. Ha- it, I don't I just don't know if it's I just don't think this game is people aren't looking for it. I, I don't think there's really people out there really looking for a game like this. I mean, they're basically no, baby. They're basically this is banking 2016. Super, yeah, you know what I'm saying? They're basically <laughs> banking on thinking that superheroes are going to be the thing that's going to get people back into it, whereas they can't even get people to go to the movies to go see these movies right now. What makes you think you're going to get somebody to spend 60, 70 bucks to play a game that is Well, I clone. think that game's probably going to be free. Oh, no, no, not 60. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I didn't mean to say 60. Yeah, because it's going to be a free-to-play. They already said it's a free-to- free-to-play game, and it's going to be... Um, the demo is going to be coming to Epic in the um, near future. And then you're putting, and then think about it, your first experience is on the Epic launcher where nobody wants to play any games. <laughs> nobody wants to play games on the Epic launcher. So 
that's already kind of set yeah. up for PC a only. Failure. That actually shocked me that it was PC only. That is PC only, yeah. Well, wasn't I, Overwatch I, I, I PC was, only at first when it first came out, or was it? It was. It was for it like was, the first yeah. six months. Yeah. Yeah. Then it came to, um, but Overwatch, man, that game was incredible when it first came out. But, but then they dropped the ball on the, um, on the uh, single player and everything on it, and um, then you had all the stuff that came out about uh, about that. So, I just think in general, it just mostly comes down to. People aren't going to be, I don't think people are going to be really interested in this. Um, I think the live service bubble is about to burst. Now, when I mean burst, I don't, I think people are still going to play them, but I think the ones that are already secured in their, in their positions are going to be like the last bastions, pretty much like how water, like nobody really plays MMOs no more. But World of Warcraft still persists and Final Fantasy still persists. But do you really mm -hmm. hear about any other MMOs? I mean, you games like yeah, yeah, um, yeah, the, the market for those particular genres and live service have been saturated. And, exactly. and at this point, you you've kind of missed the wave. And the only way to really get in where you fit in is to steal players away from st some other game. Like like Valorant like came World out in 2020. New and, World and, was able and, to do that initially for a while until they true. had content issues and stuff like that. Yeah, but uh, like Valorant stole players from Overwatch, but Valorant, you know, ha has you know, characters that look too. appealing, and, and 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 Valorant has consistent updates and content, and people like the way the game plays, and it has got a consistent community on PC. Like they they found their lane, they and they carved that out, and they and yeah. they stuck to it. I think that Marvel Rivals has an opportunity. And I think the only reason it has an opportunity is because Blizzard, again, has dropped the ball on Overwatch. That's but true. but those are the only people that are going to be interested really in this game. It's 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 going to be the people who are into those games. No one else, really. Right. Uh, yeah, cool. So with that being said, you ready um, to move over to the other one? I am not. So be no, take your time. No, take, <laughs> because no, take your time. I, I I got when I got a new monitor, I had to uh, I had to do some changes to. Oh no, you're um, good. you you ain't got to make no excuses, bro. You're good. I understand. You know, you see, this is this is how you become very comforting and tell your co-hosts like it's okay, sir. We're good. You know, we still got our our beautiful twenty nine people hanging out with us. We we really appreciate you. Only one more year. I wonder if he's talking about Destiny. Dog, listen, this is the last year, though. Seriously. I'm not playing Destiny after uh, this DLC comes out. I don't care what Bungie throws out there. I'm pretty much done with it. Um, so so you're you're definitely going to... Uh, oh, I, I was, I was going to buy play, the play DLC. The final shape. Oh, I have to. I have to. That, I would be frauding if I didn't. That, that's like a waste of... You have to. I don't know I about have that, to. man. I, mean, I have to. Bro. You don't have, I have to. to. Yes. Just like you have. Just like. Get, get, let me ask you some slow mo. Mm -hmm. What have you seen in Borderlands that makes you feel like you want to play Borderlands Four? I mean, nothing but you're gonna yet. Play it though. But you're gonna play. I'm going, it, right? Yeah, I'm gonna play it. But I mean, that's there's all, nothing yet. But the, but, but I mean, I, I, I'm still somewhat on the fence with it. It's not going to be like I'm guaranteed to play it. No, oh, you're you're gonna play it. You're you're not you're not unless listen, and the only reason you wouldn't play it is if they did something so egregious that you like Randy Pitchford came out here and did something so stupid and, and I don't even know what that stupid thing would be for you to not play that game. You would play it. it unless they, they would have to drop the ball severely for you not to play that game. And the one thing I will say is as much as I am uh, not a fan of the direction that Bungie has been going in, I haven't, I don't hold it against the game. So the game itself is something completely different. The game just got boring because they haven't been doing too many updates to it. And I'm tired of doing the same thing over and over and over again in that game. And it, it took, it, it took me nine years to get there. So, but I do want to see what the story ends at. So it's, so that's that's kind of why I'm still doing it. It's not it's not for any real like like I hate Bungie or anything. It's just the game got boring and I didn't want to play it no more. So 
<laughs> when new stuff comes out, I'll be there for that. That's about it for me. But um, um, chat. Um, let's see. We'll see. Dory Gray says Disney be out here big pimping. <laughs> Your boy Roy says Randy Bo Boo Brady Bandy. Oh, speaking of which, um, um, I forgot what I was gonna say to you. So we're gonna. So when we transition over, we're talking about the Xbox stuff over there. We're gonna talk about Phil Spencer's interview. Talk about this handheld a little bit more. Talk about the future of Xbox and why we think um, the excitement isn't there, even knowing they have a bunch of first party titles that's releasing. This is like going to be a big year for Xbox, you know, when it comes to the first party releases. But there's really no excitement around it. Like it just seems like doom and gloom every time you even talk about an xbox topic and the excitement level for xbox is at an all-time low mostly due to a lot of things that they did themselves when it comes to like communication and telling people one thing and going back and doing something completely different and that may not be a xbox thing that might be a microsoft thing but um to gamers is all one in the same you should you should uh go refresh the redirect. You should be able to see it now. Okay. Well, I didn't even go in there. I was just waiting for you to tell me it was in there. Uh go edit. I'm showing some amazing Forza Horizon 5 oh, gameplay. Oh, you know, some of some of the, the best driving in games you've ever seen. <laughs> Don't say that too loud. Let me uh let me get the I'm gonna put the link in the chat too. Okay. Uh so when I click this button to go to edit, it's not you go to edit. Yeah, I'm going to edit, but it's for some reason when I click edit, not pulling anything up. Yo, I'm, I'm, oh, this might be, I'm seeing the same thing in YouTube Studio. It won't yeah. open up edit. It's not opening edit. That's weird. All right, well, look, the link is in the chat. Um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, we the, just have to go that way. Yeah, because it's not, actually allowing us to to do anything that's weird. um hmm yeah it is not doing it that's a first okay all right um well you know what let's uh let's just keep it going um uh sound check on the dps side of things uh every, can everyone hear me good and can everyone hear well, actually you know what yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone should be able to hear me and Forte fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you're still in the DPS uh, in uh, the chat on gaming on my channel, um, click the link in the chat, and it's going to take you over to the other one because for some reason we can't redirect because um, the feature is broken right now. So I'm gonna end the stream here. Uh, yep. But anybody that's still in our chat, make sure you head over to that um, to that channel. Okay, final topic for tonight.